Welcome back guys, White Sailor here and today we're talking about the deadliest individual warrior in the entire Imperium, Trajan Valorus, the current Chief Custodian and the 17th Captain General of the Adeptus Custodies. Valorus's name is spoken of with nothing short of reverence, for many consider the Captain General to be the personal representative of the Emperor himself. Even the High Lords of Terra might be marked when in wine or in anger, but to do so with the Captain General was beyond imagination, for to mark Valorus was to mark the Emperor himself. Such blasphemy would not go unpunished and would result in the transgressor's untimely death. The office of Captain General is one of the most powerful military appointments in the Imperium of Man. It confers full responsibility for the overall defense of the soul system, Terra, the Imperial Palace and of course the Golden Throne and the Emperor himself. The Captain General is the master of the Adeptus Custodes and on many occasions during Imperial history has stood amongst the ranks of the High Lords of Terra. He is further charged with leading the greatest military campaigns fought by the 10,000 and must display a degree of warrior prowess that approaches that of the Primarchs. In the millennia since the Great Crusade, there have been just 17 incumbents of this weighty mantle. Most have died in battle, either on the holy soil of Terra or whilst leading crucial campaigns amidst the stars. Several have become eyes of the Emperor, while three, including Constantine Valda himself, the first and greatest of their number, simply vanished. Their disappearances wreathed in mystery even amongst their own comrades. Many claim that Trajan Valorus is the greatest warrior to hold the title since the Emperor bestrode the stars. Within his first solar decade of service, Valorus ran not just one but two successful blood games, a record that remains unbroken. With his remarkable grasp of battlefield strategy and his naturally aggressive streak, he earned a place for himself amongst the Alaris custodians. There, Valorous won many names from deeds, such as the destruction of the Space Hulk, Mournful Siren, the defeat of the Gene Stealer cult of the Emperor's Writhing Shadow, and his spearheading of the preemptive strike against War Crash Fist. If Valorous showed a weakness, it was his reluctance to stand back and wait for his enemies to come to him. He lasted only 22 Terran years amongst the companions before his desire to participate in a more proactive strategy of defense that saw him reassigned. He gained the rank of shield captain soon afterwards and spent several standard centuries leading sorties against emergent threats throughout the soul system and beyond. He cultivated networks of agents and informers across the Sigmantum Solar and even further out into the wider Imperium. Valorous recognized his own proclivity for aggressive action and took constant steps to temper it with comprehensive foreknowledge. Thus his strikes always fell where they should and no comrade was ever lost to reckless commands. Though the Captain General of the Adeptus Custodes traditionally served amongst the High Lords of Terra only under the most dire of circumstances such as during the War of the Beast in the mid 32nd millennium, it was only the persistence of Leif Tyron, the Chancellor of the Senatorium Imperialis at the time of the 13th Black Crusade in 999 M41 that persuaded Valerius to assume the seat amongst the High Lords that had been left vacant for some time following the death of Lord Brack the Chancellor of the Estate Imperium. It was the Chancellor's hope that Valorous would agree to serve as one of the High Lords of Terra, which would swing the vote to abolish the Lex Imperialis, the binding legal code of the Imperium, and allow for the Adeptus Custodes to finally leave Terra en masse in order to take the fight to the forces of chaos. During the so-called years of madness, a time of strange omens and ominous whispers engulfs Terra, beginning with the disappearance of the notoriously conservative Captain General Galahoth. Battling the stagnation of Galahoth's rule, the Adeptus Custodes find themselves facing a shocking increase in cult activity. Both heretical and xenophile throughout the soul system, worse is to follow, as position is revealed amongst a subsect of the doomed scryers themselves. Though not until the false predictions of the fallen psychers send Captain General Lons Ray to his death at the Battle of the Gilded Pyre, later known as the Battle of Black Pyre. It is amidst this climate of spiraling paranoia and danger that Captain General Trajan Valorous is elevated to command the 10,000, and he wastes no time in taking steps to regain ironclad control of Terra's defenses. 
Trajan Valerius has proven a dynamic and effective captain general. Under his rule, the number of blood games has increased tenfold. The defenses of the stable war brutes into the soul system have been strengthened, and long hidden cults have been purged from the Terran under hives. Little escapes the eyes of his ever expanding spy network, and armed with the certainty of the truly righteous, his covered strikes have annihilated dozens of threats to the Golden Throne. It was as if Valerus had foreseen Primarch Rupert Gilliman's return and the formation of the Great Rift long before they came, and laid all the groundwork required for the Adeptus Custodes to adapt to the new Imperium. Perhaps, some whispered, the half-understood power of the Mormon Shackle, the unusual artifact of the age of technology that he wore at his belt, allowed him to do just that. Whatever the case, the Captain General's many qualities make him ideally suited to lead in this age of unprecedented aggression. Following the destruction of the fortress world of Cadia and the formation of the Great Rift, a poor wave of the Immaterium swept over the walls of the Soul System, including the throne world itself. This allowed a large host of Kernet demons to burst through the skin of reality to assail Terra itself, in a conflict that came to be known as the Battle of Lion's Gate or informally as the Second Battle of Terra. In acting the catastrophe protocols, Valerus acted as the overall commander of the Imperial forces charged with the defense of the Imperial Palace. The Captain General personally led a charge of 4,000 custodians from the Lion's Gate to meet the invaders. They fought alongside the resurrected Primarch Robert Gellerman and his forces, newly arrived from Luna in the wake of the Terran Crusade, and successfully managed to plant the Blood God's attempt at striking the heart of the Imperium. Following this dire campaign, the High Lords voted to suspend the dictates of the Lex Imperialis, which allowed the Adeptus Custodes to sally forth from the throne world to take part in Gellerman's subsequent Indomitus Crusade and to take the fight directly to the servants of the Runes powers. At the Battle of Gathlamor during the Crusade, the Gathlamor system comes under sustained attack from the heretic Astartes of the World Bearers Traitor Legion. As the Dark Apostles summon creatures from beyond the veil, the fight turns viciously against the Imperial defenders. The Mordian 84th Regiment of the Astra Militarum and the Sisters of the Ordo of the Argent Shroud dig in to stage their last stand in the grim ruins of Gathlamor Prime's Macro Cathedral, their prayers for salvation ringing out to the screaming skies above. Sure enough, even as the hordes of traitors and abominations mobilize to attack, the Emperor answers the cries of his followers. Teleport flares erupt through the heretic lines, gold and silver lightning leaping as a combined force of custodians and grey knights storm into battle. Bolter's roar and crackling blaze tear through heretic flesh. Trajan Valerus and Grand Master Aldric Voldis leading an assault that sees the traitor's army shattered into battling warbands. Inspired by the sudden arrival of veritable demigods, the Mordians and Sisters of Battle advance, hymnals rising from their ranks over the roar of flamers and the scream of massed lace gunfire. After three solar days and nights of unremitting savagery, the Chaos Host is broken in the battle for the statue steps, with fresh Imperial reinforcements flooding into the wider Gathlamor war zone. The Custodians set course for Terra, leaving the Grey Knights to conduct a grim purge of the unfortunate that they rescued from the Macro Cathedral, for they had seen too much of chaos to be trusted. Trajan Valerus wields the Watcher's Axe, a master crafted relic caster and axe that takes the form of a huge polearm blade that crackles with golden lightning and can bisect the sarcophagus of a chaos hell brute with a single swing. The axe's haft incorporates a master crafted bolter known as the Eagle Scream, which fires adamantium tipped penetrator balls at a ferocious rate. He also wields Misericordia, the Blade of Mercy, which is a long dagger or short sword that was carried by the custodians of first the Legio Custodes and after the Horus Heresy, the Adeptus Custodes. The blade was symbolic, intended to represent that the Custodes were beneficiaries of the Magisterium Lex Ultima, which placed them above the reach of all Imperial law, save for the commandments of the Emperor of Mankind himself. The Misericordia was designed to deliver a single mortal blow, and despite the symbolic nature was sometimes used by individual custodians to carry out a death sentence or offer the Emperor's Beast to a mortally wounded and grievously suffering warrior. Alright guys, thanks a lot for watching and if you made it this far then you surely enjoyed this video, so subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay tuned for more.